the other day we looked at um, uh, an issue that is about where you know it is from verse eight to eleven of chapter one. What is the spiritual status of the individuals Peter describes here in this passage by way of contrast? Is he talking about obedient believers versus disobedient believers? Or is he talking about true believers versus those who are not true believers, like professing believers? So we saw he is talking about the uh, like true believers versus professing believers. So that was our conclusion. Now, then there is another problem that is uh, verse 19 to 21 about uh, revelation, prophecy, and, and interpretation. We already discussed this one in, uh, in our uh, bibliology, uh, and therefore I think it is not necessary to go into detail. Now, today, what we are going to look at is the passage uh, from chapter 2, verses 18 to 22, right? So, open your Bibles, open your Bibles to Second Peter. Second Peter. Uh, chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. Can one of you please read? Second Peter, uh -huh. chapter 2, 18 to 22. For when they speak great swelling, words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much want wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For one whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the later end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb that the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. All right. A very serious warning here. Uh, it's very difficult now. So let's look, uh, dive into this passage and let's ask these questions. What, again, what is the spiritual status of those in verse 18 who are the victims of false teachers? Right? What is the spiritual status? Are they saved? Are they lost? Because it says they, they came to um, know the way of the Lord. They came to know the way of the Lord, the way of righteousness. Are they saved? Are they lost? They are saved. Okay. Who is in view? Verses 20 to 22. Uh, the false teachers or their victims? That is an, another question to be addressed. Is Peter talking about the false teachers who are this way, who dog that returns its own vomit? Is it false teachers or the victims of false teachers? And what is the spiritual status of those described in verse 22? 22, 22, right? So these are the questions to be asked. So solution. First of all, are they saved or lost? In this, you know, there are two ways. Some people teaches, teach that they are saved. Why they believe that way? Because they look at the word those who barely escape, right? Uh, yes, verse 18 says those who barely escape from ones who live in error. So that barely escape is a 
word and in verse 18 can refer to individual who recently escaped something. So here from ones living in error. So they escaped from those living in error. In that, in that, in that, the latter are clearly unbelievers. So if those live in the error are unbelievers, then if the, the here is a group that escaped from that unbelievers, contrast could mean that are that the former are believers. So that some many commentators would say these people who barely escaped are believers, true believers. Then there is a second group. The other group teaches that these described here in verse 18 and 19 are lost. Now, the expression those who barely escape can also refer to individuals who have, who have partially escaped something. Not necessary to be new in faith, but those who have partially escaped. That is, they are in the process of escaping. They are close to escaping. Right? In this case, Peter is describing unbelievers are under the influence of common grace and the general convicting work of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, they are in the close. They are, they, they are not fully escaped. They are close. Uh, they are in the realm they, maybe they have heard the gospel. They, maybe they are coming to the church. But they are not genuinely saved. So that is a conclusion. Uh, and conclusion is the construction involves a present tense representing ongoing activity. And therefore, this view is preferred. That they are lost, they they maybe they have come, they have come to the church, maybe they have learned or listened to the gospel, but and that means they are no longer they are no longer the part of the old people, but they have never committed to the Lordship of Christ and never genuinely saved, never genuinely saved. Maybe they, they thought okay, they are sinful sinners like uh, uh, someone in the jail who can repent, but they, will, they may not repent to God and trust him for salvation. So the, here's maybe a group of people who came out of their old life, but they, they never embraced the Lord. So that is the second view. I think second view is preferable. <laughs> now, our second issue Second issue, who are in view in verse 20 and 22? Is false teachers in view or their victims in view? As indicated above, two questions need to be addressed with this. Verses, is Peter describing victims or false teachers? Look at verse 20 and 20, 21 and 22. For if they, for, uh, for if, after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. This last state has become worse for them than the first. It would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment handed on to them. It has happened to them, to them according to the true proverb, our dog returns to its own vomit and as saw after washing, retor returns to wallowing in the mire. All right, so is Peter describing the victims or false teachers himself? So there are two groups. Support for verses describing the victims of false teachers are following, right? Number A, because in verse 20, Peter used the word escape again. So 18 already used the word escape. In verse 20 also, he used the same word. Second idea 
in verse 20 is that it is again entangled in sins parallel to the descriptions of the victims in verse 18. Because you see that they were, they were kind of entangled into the, uh, the sins of the flesh, right? Again, entangled in sins parallel to the description of the victims, 18, as those who had just escaped such sins. So there is a group of people believe that this is talking about the victims of the false teachers, not the false teachers themselves. That's a one group. The second group. Second group think that this is this verse is support or this verse describe false teachers, not their victims. For example, Peter describes the individual in verse 20 as overcome. Right? They, they, they are overcome. Now, that is the same word actually used for false teachers in verse 19. If you look at verse 19, you see that it is, they are overcome. Right? So, the closest antecedent for the subject of the verb in verse 20 and the pronoun dumb at, uh, at the end of verse 20 is the pronoun they, and therefore it is a reference to false teachers. Right? So, yes, there are two opinions on that. So, what is the right understanding? I think the second view is right. What is that? The, this is a reference to false teachers. The particle four at the beginning of 20 introduced the clarification and support for Peter's statement about enslave, enslavement of false teachers. Actually, Peter is talking here about false teachers. All right, these are all minor issues. Now, the, the biggest issue that we need to talk here is the spiritual status of false teachers. <clears throat> are they saved? or not saved, lost, right? That is the biggest question in this, in this book that we need to address. So what is the spiritual status of these individuals? Uh, some people think that they are saved. As we said again in the early, in the beginning, yes, they use the word escaped the defilements of the world. So that word escaped, is a reference to salvation. Yeah, or conversion. Second, the verse, second, in verse 20, if we read, for if after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord. Knowledge of the Lord. Yes. So these people have Knowledge of the Lord, which Paul and Peter actually uses for his readers in verse 3, right? Chapter 1, verse 3. If you look at chapter 1, verse 3, this is what we're seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him. So verse 3 of chapter 1 clearly uses that word for the readers, therefore, they believe that th these false teachers are saved. Are saved. Right? Verse 21, also a key for them. What is the key? You know, verse 21 says, it would be better for them not to know, not to have known the way of righteousness. So knowing the way of righteousness is a declaration that parallels of Peter's description in verse 3. So by looking at knowledge of the Lord and knowledge of the way of righteousness indicates that this is a genuine case. These false teachers are genuinely saved, genuinely saved, right? So that's the first view. Now, as we discussed, there is one, you know, the, the opposite side of this view. 
What is that? The opposite group of people, scholars suggest that, you know, these false teachers are lost. They are not genuinely saved. In verse 20, we read, their last state is worse than their first. Right? Yeah. It's a, look at the last portion of that verse. Look at verse 20 again. The last portion of verse 20 says what? That, oh no, the last state has become worse for them than the first. Right? So that clearly suggests that, right, in that their first state of what of lost individual was, the only way their last state could be worse if they were apostate. So comparing to their life, they are in a worst condition means not a good condition. They are not in a good condition when they were found before their salvation. It's worse now. Second point, very clear, verse 21 describes that these people have turned away from God's commandment. That is a description of apostasy. Right? They said that to turn away from holy commandment handed to them. It is apostate, denying the faith that was once delivered to everyone, denying the, the clear teaching of scripture. Clear teaching of scripture. So that is clearly a suggestion that these people are lost. That's the reason they deny the clear teachings of scripture. Point number C, Peter illustrated in verse 22, that these show their true nature, right? by returning to the activities descriptive of their former life, right? The dog, dog returns its own vomit. It is the return to the activities of their former life characterized by sin, clearly the evidence of the laws. So, question is, are these false teachers saved or lost? Simple answer is, they are lost. Which is a warning for all of us that we need to be careful not to bring our own experiences to the scripture or our own theories or our own understanding. Rather, we need to believe what the scripture says. The faith that is handed to us to be believed. Otherwise, we could be wrong. We could be wrong. So that is what I wanted to say here.